Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Band Chat with Royal Oak, where we talk about being an independent band and everything that comes with it. My name is Miles, and today I will be your host, and I am joined by the guys. As always, we're here with Brayson. Hello. Mike. Hello, hello. And Austin. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> so nice. before we get started, I just want to say, guys, this is our seventh episode already. Holy. Isn't that pretty wild? Yeah, you could watch number every seven. day of the week. Yeah, it's true. Help, pl- please do. <laughs> okay, there we go. If this is your first episode, please go back and throughout the next week, watch all seven in conjunction. In conjunction. Throughout the week. You know what I'm trying to, I'm trying to say. Um, so that being said, this episode, we are switching gears a little bit. So we, so, so far you've heard some stories, you've heard about our history, you've heard about our, uh, <laughs> our misfortune with tour vans, <laughs> and you've heard about us making albums so far. So we want to switch things up a little bit. We want to put our, our education hats on, and we want to kind of share some knowledge that we've experienced around touring as an independent artist. So, um, before we get into the nitty gritty of, of the booking and the vehicle requirements, the merch, where you're going to stay, where you're going to eat, we're going to talk about all, all this stuff, um, tech requirements you need for venues. Before that, we have an icebreaker as always. And this week's icebreaker, since we are talking about tours is if you could tour with one artist, sorry, if Royal Oak could tour with one artist, who would you want that artist to be? Mike, why don't you start us off? I was hoping you wouldn't pick me first. <laughs> <laughs> I have. So I feel like my thing is that like, I don't necessarily feel like I want to play like a big stadium, you know, like I think it'd be cool. But to me, I think the ideal level is like, like big theaters, you know, like, yeah. like, like a, like a, 2000 person venue i want to play like that size venue so i feel like a band like maybe like uh, i don't know i'm gonna <laughs> say a band that doesn't play big theaters like that but like someone like dear rouge who like fits our sound and is like a mid-sized band in the canadian scene uh i feel like that would be a really good uh, a really good pairing nice okay okay dear rouge i like it austin how about you all right. Um, this might sound like a bit of a cop out answer, or like a bit of a, like a blanket answer, but hear me out. Um, as you probably heard from our past episodes in terms of touring or whatnot, you know, touring is such like a fun vibe when you meet so many uh, great people on the road. And, you know, especially with our last tour we did uh, when we toured with uh, Chersey back in 2019, I really think it would be fun just to tour with any like any like great group like any great band or like group of artists that we've met on tour would be really fun like there's really nothing oh, that yeah. that like hits home more than just like a solid homie tour because yes. then that way it's like you know you're touring with quality people you're playing shows with quality people and you're just you know you're just surrounded by fantastic talent night after night and so because of that i can't pick just one that's why i'm saying this isn't a cop-out answer and i have a real reason but it's like we've played with so many different artists over the last you know three tours we've done that there's just there's just too many to pick from but like so many good hangs and so many good memories are made on the road that that like that i don't want to necessarily tour with like some crazy you know big like bigger than us artist or whatever that would just be like oh they're the opening band whatever or like you know what i mean i i want it to be just just quality hangs the entire time. So I don't have a specific band, but I have a specific feel. Okay. Uh, okay. Quality well, if, hangs. If, yeah. If, if, quality hangs, the one artist. That's quality that'd be hangs. A decent the band, band name. Yeah. Quality hangs. If you want us to change your name to quality hangs, let us know in the comments <laughs> below. <laughs> okay, cool. So quality hangs from Austin. Uh, Brayson, <laughs> how about you? Um, I was thinking about this and I would probably have to go with the no longer in function ivory hours because oh that's a good answer it just seems like they have their shit together and because they came when they came to vancouver and and got us open for them they came in uh, a minivan as you heard in our our tour van episode and they're just like they're ready to go like and they ain't no divas they're just packed in a little what would they even driving 
Uh, van. Even, it was like a it was grand mini. caravan. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And just a band like that, that just like knows that is just level headed and just easy to work with would be like dream. So maybe yeah. Luke Rose then is who you would tour with him and his yeah. band. <laughs> maybe just Luke Rose. Well, because that's that's what he's going under now. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, yeah, once yeah, he gets yeah. a band to play with, if he gets a band to play with him, maybe mm-hmm. that's the artist. Yeah, yeah. I, f- I feel like I feel like a good combination of like all three of our answers, like Mike's answer, Brayson's answer, and my answer is all just Mwah. so. Basically, we've created a hypothetical super band. Yeah, right, Miles, fin- finish it off. Yeah. This is this is. <laughs> This is so funny because I knew you guys would exactly go down this route. And, you know, I agree. I I would love to tour with more bands, you know, like at our level in terms of that stuff. But I I took it a more analytical and future looking approach, like a more like a more aspirational kind of dream aspect to it. Um, and I went really analytical with it. And you, this is going to be completely out of left field. You guys are going to be like, w- why? <laughs> just, but you know what? Just just hit us. Just go for it. Hear me out. Hear me out. So under the criteria of the fans of that person, um, the, the, the genre in which they reside, their demographic, the musicians that this person gets on their tour with them, um, and just the knowledge you could soak up from touring with a person like this. And also, I went to one of his shows, and the band that opened for them, I don't know, if, have you guys heard of Laney? They're like, they're kind of like a pop, they're a pop yeah, band. Yeah, yeah, yep. Mm-hmm. Um, so, the artist is Justin Bieber. I would love <laughs> to, tour, say to tour stadiums <laughs> touring with Justin Bieber. I think it would just be, I think it'd be cool. Like I said, I, I was going to go the route of a smaller band and have like the quality hangs mm-hmm. vibe. But then I went, I got aspiration. I was like, you know what? Based on demographic, playing with awesome musicians, having yeah, you the shoot for most the stars awesome, here. awesome treatment on like a bus or whatever it is. Justin Bieber. I'm sorry. That's what it was. That's what it was yeah. for me. That's fair. Rep that Canadian crew. Exactly. Yeah. Your your answer is literally like basically the exact the exact antithesis to what the three of us had combined said. I know, I know, it's the <laughs> complete opposite, which is why I yeah. love that I chose it. Yeah. I mean, you know, J- JB and his band—they could be quality hangs. They're probably quality hangs. I yeah, would, I would think, and they're they probably hangs too. have their shit together. So, exactly. And the thing is, like, just learning. I almost see this as like a first big tour. If we were like an opener, that would be like sick. You learn so much. It would just be incredible playing big stadiums. I would love to play smaller venues too, but something about playing a stadium, like, you know, it'd just be sick. It would be cool. It's yeah. it's a whole other thing. Not that any of us have literally any experience with that whatsoever, <laughs> but I can I can imagine it would be pretty sweet. Yes, exactly. So with that out of the way, with our artists of choice out of the way, artists artists slash non-artists for some of us, but that's okay, quality hangs. The band. Let's <laughs> move into our topic of today, which is how to tour. So um, if we, we rewind a little bit, we have been on three tours now. So we've been on one Western Canadian tour, and we've been on two full cross-Canada tours. Um, at this at this independent level, so it's important to keep in mind that we were the ones that were completely DIY were the first two. The third one we had um, some help from our friend Chersey's team in booking and um, some other aspects. So that's kind of where we're coming from. But so but before we get into like the what you're going to do when you book venues, book vans, all that stuff. There is, are, there are rather some important things you need to consider before you even think of touring. All right. So the first one is that you have to make sure, actually, I'm going to set this as the first one. You have to set priorities. So why are you touring? So is this, is this a way to get new fans? Is this a way to, um, you know, build your bond as a band? I mean, ideally your first purpose should be to reach new people, I would say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Business oriented. 
Yeah. Exactly. I mean, at the end of the day, even if you're just like, yeah, let's go tour. We're here to have a good time. That's that's awesome. That's great. In many ways, that's like partially what our first tour kind of was. So Mm -hmm. but as long as you're all on the same page and knowing that that's what sort of the the goal of the tour is, that's that's what's important is just making sure everyone is in the same like headspace. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad mm-hmm. you brought that up because that's a that's a good point. Right. Because, I mean, mm-hmm. if you're driving across Canada like that's we had a good time doing that. So maybe you just want an excuse to drive across <laughs> your country and you're like, hey, might as well book some shows while doing it. But like Austin said, it's really important that you all are on the same page with what your main purpose is, whether mm-hmm. that's to reach more people in different cities, um, have a good time, etc. So. Once you get the main purpose out of the way, next, um, this kind of relates to what Austin said in terms of a common purpose, a common goal. You have to make sure that the everyone in the band is committed to doing this and to taking that time off, which can also be very hard depending on what your work situation is or where you're at in life. I mean, for us, we're in our like call it mid twenties for all of our tours. I'm just going to just blanket it like that. Sure. Um, for us, it was, we kind of a different situation. I mean, me and Mike were in school, Brayson works at a music store and then Austin works a full-time job. So for us, it was Austin. Do you maybe want to speak a bit about like what it was like, uh, getting your, um, work off for tours? (laughs) Yeah. Long story short, tough. (laughs) <laughs> but um, the big thing that I found is um, if you're wanting to tour, you kind of have to make a bit of a compromise because in order for personally, in order for me to be able to tour, I had to use any vacation time that I had uh, built up from work in order to do so. And in some cases, I even took unpaid vacation. My work was really good and accommodating for me. Um, but you know, not all places will be. So, uh, that was my own personal experience, but again, it really just, it goes, it varies from person to person and you know, how, what sort of attitude your workplace has towards those kinds of things. So for us, we were relatively lucky, but, um, you know, some people may not be able to do those kinds of things, especially, you know, if they're in a job or a certain career where they can't really afford to, I guess, you know, take that time off. Otherwise they might, you know, they might have to quit, et cetera, et cetera. And those kinds of things have to be respected between band members. When you're trying to make this kind of commitment, you really have to respect people's boundaries in terms of what they're comfortable with and what they can do. Otherwise that can really tear a band apart. So I think that's something really important to note that, and again, that comes back to all being on the same page as each other, but yeah, just, you know, be cool. <laughs> yeah. This is a good <laughs> well, way to put it. <laughs> well said, I would say. So, I mean, mm-hmm. one way we kind of combated this, um, you know, being able to take time off, because, I mean, our our latter two tours, one was, they're both basically three and, a, three and a half weeks. Let's just call it a month. Sure. Um, we did them in the summer because the main reason for that was because Mike and I are in universities. Well, I mean, at the time... I mean, Mike's Mike's a bit of a traveler as well. So in terms of the time frame between where you were at certain tours, I'm not going to get into that. But <laughs> that was another reason why we chose the summer was just because it was it was easy. It wasn't going to be cold because, of course, we're in the the Great White North. So if we were to take good old Limp Dick, whom you heard about a couple episodes ago, across the country in the winter, that would not be fun. I don't think. No, we'd be dead. We did. That, van, that, van, <laughs> that van did not deserve snow tires. Exactly. Yeah, no. That's a, also a very, that's a very good point. Okay. So if you have everyone that's committed to take off the allotted time, you know, everyone's got their work situation sorted out. Another very important thing to keep in mind is that you want to consider your band dynamic and your actual relationship with each other, because you got to keep in mind, you're going to be spending to, uh, whether it's two weeks, a week, even like if it's a short tour, like three days, four days, five days, but you're spending up to a month with these people day in and day out. So you really want to make sure that you have a strong relationship and you have a good band dynamic. I mean, for us, um, the me, Austin and Brayson have known each other for 20 years, Mike for like what? 10 or 11 now call it you were getting up there yeah i'll catch up to you guys eventually yeah 
<laughs> but yeah, so in terms of the band dynamic, we felt like we had that part down. I mean, the thing is, of course, you have your your little conflicts as tour goes on, as any two people who are living Mm-hmm. under the same i was gonna say van the same roof, roof. Yeah. The, the same the same, <laughs> the same the same van roof yeah exactly that's a good point a good the way same to put sun it. the same sunroof exactly the same tule. Ex- that's the same oh, tule. i like that yeah, they're all under the, the same, same under yeah. the same hole in the roof how about that yeah same hole in the roof oh wait i just realized what <laughs> no that Took was a, a solid second. throwback i like that if you don't understand the reference go to episode I think it would be four, 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 probably. four, four for more on the hole in the ceiling. And then go back and watch all of them. Yes, exactly. We're just going to keep plugging listen, that. that we're just going to keep plugging that this entire, this entire episode. Just go back. <laughs> listen to all of them. Why not? All right, cool. So once you have your, a lot of time, everyone's the dynamic, everyone's on the same page. Um, another th- important thing to keep in mind is do you have enough material to tour? You want to make sure mm-hmm. that you have enough to fill up up to an, I would say an hour set. Would you say that's right, guys? Yeah, like at least, yeah. but we've definitely played shows, um, especially like in our first tour where we were like, we were just sort of booking any venue that we could. Like sometimes we were the only band and they wanted us to play three 45 minute sets. That's true. Right? So mm-hmm. having, like obviously it'll depend what kind of shows you're booking, mm-hmm. but you want you want probably like an hour and a half worth of material at least so that you can like pull things out anytime you need to. Yeah. And for anyone who's having to do this in like a bar type setting, people like Weezer. Yeah, people <laughs> like, we found that people out. People do like Weezer. People like Weezer. You you play Say It Ain't So, and all of a sudden there's three people on the stage, and you're you know fucking half a pitcher deep in, in beer, and you're like, this is strange. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> this is str- this is odd. But um, yeah. So. In in preparation for getting that hour and a half of material, because you might be saying like, what? Like, I don't have a, an hour and a half of original material. Like Austin just hinted at, you need to have covers. And honestly, as a touring band, I mean, I think I speak on behalf of all of, of, all of us when I say this, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do think it's very important that you do play covers when you are at a lower level or an independent totally. level rather. Mm-hmm. Because the thing is like, people don't know you you've never played in saskatoon before they don't know who you are and they're gonna hear your original songs and like as kick-ass as they could be they don't really have like a measure of comparison if it's like good like i think as soon as you play a cover people are like oh i know this song and this is a good version of it like this Mm -hmm. is really cool like that then suddenly they, they have like a comparison of being like okay they're they're good they're not just like weird and experimental and i like can't figure them out you know and it's not i would say also on that that it's it's also a lot of um relatability like if if mm-hmm. your band plays a song that other people know they'll be like oh this band likes the music that i like i like them you know yeah mm-hmm. it's true and that's and that brings up a good point is that choose your covers wisely please because mm-hmm. i there's so many bands who are like oh we're playing covers and it's by someone the same size as them so like you're not doing any, I mean, like the thing is, if it brings you enough joy that <laughs> you're willing to sacrifice the audience not knowing you, then by all means, go ahead. But we try to choose covers that are like when we we try to usually play one to two covers a show, mm-hmm. usually like throwbacks, but like hits, and then we'll try and put our own spin on them. Yeah, so that, yeah. The way the way I look at it is like the. Your original songs aren't going to get strangers out on the dance floor. It's going to be the cover that gets them there, and then you're going to keep them there with your songs. Like, that's Mm -hmm. nobody wants to get up and dance to a song they don't know the words to. Yeah, exactly. Like, we've, you know, in the past, we've, uh, our like our general formula, uh, as like Miles briefly touched on, is we'll normally do like mm, two covers if we're doing like a headlining set. We'll do one that's like a throwbacky cover for our demographic, which is usually a 2000 something, like 2006 ish something, sometimes pop punk, sometimes just pop. And then we'll do like one modern song that is very popular at the moment. So, you know, we've really been able to, you know, draw a crowd in by playing Mr. Brightside or something like that before. And then we keep the crowd there by playing our music. And it's, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's like when you're a small band, you just have to do what you got to do to get people into it and then keep them there. And yeah, we've found in, you know, the majority of situations that covers are really good for that sort of thing. Yeah. And that is, that's well put, I would say. So 
that's a little bit of before you even think about touring. So now let's say you're like, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to start planning this out. So there's a couple of... I mean, there's more than a couple, but there's things you need to consider. I mean, we're going to get into all the nitty gritty of this, but this is kind of like a preliminary check, so sort of, so to speak. So first thing you want to do is you're going to want to map out your route. So you want to see where you're going. And this is very important because this is going to determine your venues you book, which relates to the bands you book, which, um, and then you also have to determine where you're going to stay. So mapping out your route is very important. And you also don't really want to be doing much backtracking either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That being said, your mouth, your (laughs) mouth, your route, like you might map it out, but it might change as things go along. Cause as you're booking venues, um, some of them will just say no. And sometimes you just won't be able to find a venue in some cities, some cities. So you'll just have to move along. Um, Or the other thing is that you might, hit a city that's close to another city that you weren't expecting to play in. So be flexible. Mm -hmm. And, um, on top of that, like, no, you gotta know what kind of places have your fan base as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, it's true. So we'll get, I we'll get, we'll dive into that a little bit more when we get into booking venues, but absolutely right. I think being flexible is, it's super important. I mean, I know that one thing that we tried to do was base it around the bigger cities, right? Yeah. We would kind of say, of okay, we want to hit the bigger cities on weekends is what we'd usually try to do. So mm-hmm. that's kind of a proxy that we would use. Feel free to steal it. Do as you will. <laughs> yeah, do as you will. It seemed to work pretty well. Obviously, you can't mm-hmm. hit every single big city on um, weekends, but that's what we tried to tried to do. Depends on how long your tour is, of course, as well. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing, make a list of your gear and make sure there are serial numbers on it for insurance purposes. Last thing you want to do is get your van stolen and all your gear is gone. I mean... It, it sucks because you'll probably have to cancel the tour. But the last thing you want is no insurance on that. So you want to make sure you have, um, this is just something you should do anyways as an, as a musician. You should just mm-hmm. have a list of your gear with um, serial numbers. So that's all I'll say about that. Um, next, organize a tour binder with itineraries and addresses of venues and accommodations. So I actually have one right here. So for the video people, you might be able to see this. For the audio, I'm sorry, but I'll show the video people a little bit. I don't know if you can even read that, so maybe this isn't it's a waste of time. But just anyway, list it off. Basically, like, list it off. <laughs> it's, yeah, a it's a root p- point. The thing about the tour binder is like it definitely comes. I feel like that comes like right before you're about to actually leave mm-hmm. because you're like, great. We know exactly where we're gonna be on each day, and like the tour binder. Like when I made them, they were like almost like to the minute. Like it would be like we're yeah. here, and it's gonna take X amount of hours to drive, and we're here. This is where the venue is. These are the bands. This is the deal. Yeah. And this is where we're staying that night. And that mm-hmm. way you're like, you're set. You have any questions about what's happening tomorrow? You get a binder to the face. Yeah. It's, <laughs> you get a binder to the face. And it's honestly, it's it's so nice to have you just put it in the door panel of your van. And it's great. Like even here, I'm just, it says, okay, August 19th, Montreal, wake up in Ottawa, load in time, address of the venue, when sound check is, when doors mm-hmm. are, um, and then the sets for the bands. I mean, obviously that's going to change um, yeah. depending on opening and closing slots. And then, mm-hmm. and then even the, the deals. So like um, door split, pitcher of beer, 30% off, free to Elore. I'm not saying that right, but this was in Montreal. Oh, we got poutine in Montreal. Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> exactly. And then staying at, we, I don't think we had a place for here yet, so we don't have that. And then another one, we had, we even have our days off in itineraries. Mm-hmm. So, like Mike said, down to the minute, very helpful to have that. So you're just very organized. Yeah, yeah especially it, when you're in those parts of the country that don't have cell service. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. True. It, and it also just it also just prevents you from just trying to sift through like twenty million different emails because you know by the time you've actually finished booking this tour and you're ready to go, your 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 inbox is just cluttered with crap. So mm-hmm. any way that you can consolidate all the info you need from a day to day basis into a single thing, the more you can do, the better. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So yeah, tour binder, huge plus. Gotta have that. Um, next. I'll say this first. I mean, this is, you should just have this anyways as a band. You need an EPK before you tour. You abs, like, if you didn't have one, 
and you need one, put it this way. If you don't have an EPK, you shouldn't be even thinking about touring, probably, I would argue. <laughs> yep. Hey, Miles. Yeah. Hey, Miles. Yes. What does EPK stand for? It stands for Electronic Press Kit, for those That's of you who don't right. know. Um, but yeah, so if you don't have one of those and you're an artist, do it now, I would say. It's a very important um, write-up of... What, what's on there, Mike? It's um, bios, I mean, pictures... Yeah, like a short bio, some some highlights, maybe uh, links to all your socials and websites, um, probably your most recent couple songs, uh, definitely a live video, because uh, you're going to be sending this to promoters or venues. They want to know what you're going to look like on stage. So it's basically just like a package that um, you, you have everything that you need in one place. So you can just send it out to the venue and say, hey, this is us. Check it out. Like We want to play at your venue, essentially. And if you Google like how to make an EPK, there's a million different links. You'll you'll be able to to find it out, like how to make one. It's, mm -hmm. yeah, we believe in you. And there's a lot of <laughs> tools. Honestly, a tool that I've been using a lot that works great for almost anything is Canva. That would be, that would be a good tool to use for an EPK, I would say. Really easy design tool. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last thing we'll say, because I mean, there's a bunch more things we could say, but just in the interest of time, this is the last thing we'll say before we get into the venues, bands, um, that kind of booking stuff, all the nitty gritty, is pack light. And the note I have here is <laughs> pack light like Brayson. No pillow, just a backpack. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need. Just use your backpack as a pillow. It's going to suck. And tour does suck for sleep. That's just the way it is. Pack light. Your bandmates will thank you. I Yeah, but... Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a happy medium, I think. There's an asterisk yeah. there. We... I remember when we, on our first cross Canada tour and we, we decided to save money. We were going to camp sometimes and Brayson did not bring a sleeping bag or a pillow or just about any, like <laughs> didn't you did not even have a sweater. And I remember there's a, there's a photo of us on the, on the shores of Lake Superior camping and you are like in the sleeping bag that we just bought you from Canadian Tire <laughs> because you didn't have a sweater. <laughs> oh Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, pack light. Like, if you can fit everything into a small duffel bag or a big backpack, that's awesome. Definitely bring a pillow mm -hmm. and a sleeping bag. I feel like those are, like, super vital because you're going to be crashing on all manners of surfaces. Yeah. yeah. And that being said, when you're packing for tour, triple check everything. Because while Brayson forgot his – well, didn't bring a sleeping bag, I forgot a sleeping bag. So I had to buy one at the same time he did. We actually have a matching pair. But uh, yeah, <laughs> very so, cute. They zip them together and like cuddle when it gets really cold. <laughs> and yeah, the sometimes. shores, the shores of Lake Superior, they're chilly, man. Me and Brayson, Cuddle City, Cuddle City. <laughs> but yeah, no, for, for real. Like, make sure you you like all the things you want to bring. Make damn sure you bring them. Yes, definitely. don't make be like sure. me. I love that song. Who's that by? Taking Back Sunday. Oh, okay, don't know it. Maybe I'll check <laughs> it out. Probably. Thanks, won't. resident emo guy. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so once you're all packed i mean sorry not once you're all packed you're not going to be packed yet you still have to do a lot of shit before you pack no um, that this, at this point it's this probably like, yeah this is probably like it's worth noting that at this point we're talking about here this is like six months out yes at, at probably mm, at least or around six months out yeah yeah i would say mm -hmm. i would say like even more like like well i'll just get into it like when you're when you're booking your venues you have to book, like, if you're thinking about booking this summer, if touring was happening this summer, you would be booking last year. And we're in February, just for yeah. those who are wondering. Yeah. yeah. So, so you got to be ahead of the curve because it, it's not, there's so many bands that are touring, right? Um, so those slots are going to fill up quick. And, and it's not even just bands. There's so many other things being put on by these venues um, they have to account for on top of that. Um, once you have those venues booked, there's so much other prep that you have to do between those six to eight months. Right. Um, but yeah, you're going to book venues six months in advance. Um, sometimes they might not get back to you. Try again, keep trying. Sometimes it takes up to three or four times to get a response from a venue. Music um, industry. <laughs> yeah we played the guitar we don't check our email <laughs> basically 
but it happens. Um, that's just the way it is. And uh, where is I going with that? That's it. <laughs> just, I mean, just bu- yeah. And then, I mean, kind of going off of what we were saying earlier, um, with mapping out your route, things will change when you map out your route, depending on like Brayson's saying, these venues have a lot of other events that happen that they need mm-hmm. to accommodate for. So one thing, cause I did a bit of venue booking with you, Brayson, for one of the tours. And I remember mm-hmm. that you always want to just go to the venue's website because a lot of them will have like karaoke nights or have like open mic nights. So you just want to make sure that you're the day you want to go to that city is open. First of all. Yeah. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Check those schedules. Yeah. And you know, and that's, that's another part about having um, sort of a desired route for your touring uh, sort of figured out beforehand is if you can't is if the venue can't accommodate you on the way there see if they can help you on the way back yes yes yeah so basically so that way you know as long as it's not you know the venue at the beginning or the venue at the end you sort of can have two different options based on where you will approximately be and then that way your your options are just more open totally Mm -hmm. and then once you've booked venues like the the next step is bands that are going to play with you and really like the more that i think about this as we were prepping for this episode i feel like sometimes you can kind of do it the other way around like book a band first if there's a band that you know that you really want to play with in that city like i'm reaching out to them first and saying we're we're planning to come to town around this time we'd love to play with you you know are you available one i feel like you, you get that like insider scoop when you kind of book the band first yeah you're like if you've never been to a city before, you don't know where the cool venues are. Like, you don't know, like, you know, you're like, oh, this venue looks great. And then you show up and it's like in the middle of nowhere, right? Like, you don't realize mm-hmm. that it's not downtown or or whatever. So, like, w- we've definitely had bands that have toured that have contacted us and said, hey, we're playing such and such place. Do you want to play with us? And we go, oh, <laughs> we would never, ever play there. <laughs> so it's like... It, it, it depends you can you can do it either way and i think on your first tour if you're listening to this podcast like planning to book your very first tour you probably will end up booking the venues first but i think once you start to get to know bands in those cities or mm-hmm. even like like you'll just start to get to know people and get to know the cities better you might end up booking bands first it, it depends you can mm-hmm. do it either way last thing you want to do though is book a band and then not have a venue to play in. So yes, yeah, it's true. And it's, I like, yeah, I like that you brought up that it can go either way because that that mm-hmm. is a good point where it's like getting the insider info from the band first. That can definitely, I know that we would have benefited from that in a few cases. Yeah, for sure. Totally. Um, That's why I feel like, I like I had to say that even though it's not necessarily what we've done in the past, it's probably what I would do moving forward. Like, and even if we were to go tour in like Europe, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I, I think. Sorry? Just just like touching base with bands and figuring out like where is the cool spot, especially mm-hmm. for like our genre, like our sound, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 I would agree. And then in terms of looking for those bands, uh, one tactic that we like to do is use social media to your full advantage. Um, mm-hmm. I remember there was one point where I was booking some bands and literally just typing in um, like... Toronto bands, Hamilton bands, Saskatoon bands, Los Angeles mm-hmm. bands, if you're in the LA area. I mean, that would probably be a lot easier to find a band <laughs> in LA. <laughs> I don't think you need to use a hashtag, but but we actually had, we had we got a lot of um, openers and headliners through, through that method of just looking up mm-hmm. hashtags, searching on Facebook, when you just have nowhere um, to, when you have no idea where to look, just mm-hmm. go to those hashtags. And that... It kind of, it's kind of a double lesson there because you should be using hashtags on your posts because mm. if there's someone like us who's looking to book a band mm. and we're using these hashtags and you didn't, you didn't use the hashtag, that's a, maybe a missed show opportunity for you if you got a lot to offer. Totally. Maybe. And I will, I will add one more pro tip to this, to the whole booking band saga. Um, one thing that when I've helped out booking bands, one thing that I've found helpful is um, going to like the social media accounts of the local venues in the area, scrolling back to see the names of local bands who have played in those venues in the past. And then that just helps you, you know, give an idea like, OK, they've played there. They first of all know what the venues like. They play shows, you know, somewhat often. And you can really get a larger list of bands that way. And you can kind of backtrack from there. 
Yeah, that's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up because I think one thing we kind of missed on was genre. Where you're going to play does depend on your genre of music as yeah. well. So if you go to a social media page of a venue and you see like metal guys, like metal heads and like, you know, you're a pop band or a reggae band, you're probably not going to want to go there, right? So that's you're definitely going to turn off the regulars, I think. Exactly. Oh, so yeah. we've we've done that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've. I remember one specific. Um, uh, our, I think it was on our first tour where we played a metal venue in Edmonton. Oh, yeah. With uh, with our 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 folk our folk band friends, uh, Evergreen. And that was a very interesting time because we were like at that point we're like you know indie rock and folk music and the stage is everything is just black and everyone there is just like there it's it's a it's a metal bar so that was it that was an interesting juxtaposition yeah yeah so, so the moral of the story is find venues and bands that fit your sound because mm -hmm. when you're touring to a city you've never been to you're relying on the other bands to bring people essentially and you kind of have to hold them accountable as well to like promote the show and bring people out and um like make it a good show because you don't know anyone there but if they're if they're a metal band and you're a pop band they're gonna bring all their metal fans and then they're gonna leave when you start playing so yeah. booking bands that have like a similar vibe or, or a similar similar sound to you is the best way to make sure that they'll stick around they'll listen to you and then maybe they'll buy your merch and they'll come to your next show Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I would also try and say, like, make sure they're engaged with their audience on their their platforms as well. That's one thing I know that we look for is to make sure that they're engaging with they're posting regularly, engaging with fans on social media. So that's also something mm -hmm. important to consider. Mm -hmm. OK, cool. Is that everything about booking bands? I think we that was pretty good. Pretty I feel like I could write like a dissertation on this, but it's true. Yeah. <laughs> in, yeah, the, yeah. in the interest of, of moving along, I feel like that's 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 good We're but good. hey if you have any questions just shoot us a dm and we will answer all of them to the best of yeah. our abilities absolutely yeah, yeah. a dm True. or you can email us at royal oak official at gmail.com we are also there we are also available yep and if you're on youtube just drop a comment below and we will we'll get to it um but yeah and if there's anything you want to add as well like feel free to message us or any any suggestions of anything we missed that would also mm -hmm. be great yeah, All right, moving here. along. Your vehicle requirements. I feel like I don't need to spend a ton of time on this one because we already had two full episodes of basically what not to do when yeah when yeah buying like a based van. Ba based off of like our our previous episodes, it kind of feels like we're not a hundred percent qualified <laughs> to comment on this, but. I I mean, qual qualified in the sense of we know what really didn't work <laughs> which was a lot of our second tour van it didn't work <laughs> yeah i mean that being said like just all the you probably want to spend a decent amount of money on your van we've come to realize because we as you heard in the previous episodes if you listen to them episodes three and four we went the cheaper route when buying our vans and it sure as fuck bit us in the ass i would say yes um because with the with the white van, I'm not going to go into it too specifically, but like essentially just making sure that you have a good amount of money or capital that you can put towards a good functioning vehicle that is safe and that is going to get you across the country or mm -hmm. across wherever you're going. Um, so that being said, one thing we definitely recommend is you want to get that vehicle inspected before you purchase it. Mm -hmm. So um, depending on where you are, I mean, here in Canada, you can get BCAA to do it. There's a there's a company called Instamec. I'm not sure if they're uh, Canadian-wide, but just search up like vehicle inspection. And mm -hmm. uh, ideally, there's a mechanic that can come out to you. I don't know if that's the case everywhere. But definitely, you're going to want to get your vehicle inspected and ensure that it is all safe and ready to go and rust free and all that stuff. And then also things to keep in mind, you want to keep it clean. You want to keep yes. your van clean. This is going to be a 100%. hard one. This is going to be a hard one because, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, especially us. 
we we <laughs> we cannot say with confidence. Like we kept it pretty clean, but we had so much stuff that it was hard to keep clean 100% of the time. Yeah. Say. Yeah. Like I think the worst, not the worst, but there were always just like piles of clothes. <laughs> yes. Because like you would go we we drive around in our like shorts and and tank tops because it's the hottest balls in the summer and then we'd get to the venue and then we'd change into our black jeans for our show in the van and then just like throw shorts somewhere like we gotta play Mm -hmm. and then repeat that for like three nights in a row and there's just like like a winners inside the van there's just (laughs) like clothes it's so true though like you would oh Mm -hmm. and it, it wasn't one culprit either it would always be like whose are these oh this time it's I feel like Mike. I feel like you're pretty good. I'm a neat freak, so yes, I yeah. hate living in that van for a month. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. No. So you but want? Yeah. Go ahead. I, I keep it clean. I try my best. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, for us, like especially when we were in Limp Dick, the Windstar, we <laughs> there was not really any room to spare. So, like, we had. Like, you would have to open the door and, like, shit would fall out a lot of time. <laughs> like, it was just, like, that kind of stuff. You'd open the sliding door and someone would have to, like, hold the stuff back while the door was open. Then you'd make sure it was standing up properly before you got out. So, try to keep it clean because that's how you're going to stay organized. That's how you're going to have your tour binder handy. You're going to mm. be able to keep everything clean. Um, and then, if, like, food. Like, don't put food all over the fucking place. Like, please... Eat, like have your have your Takis, have your flaming hot Cheetos, have your snacks. Those are absolutely necessary. But don't make don't put crumbs everywhere. No way. Close the bag. Close the bag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a either perfect cl- way to put it. Either close the bag or finish the bag. Pick one. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And then what else we got on here? <laughs> the note <laughs> says in brackets. On all caps, keep it clean and bring black ice. True. Oh, it's going to get stinky. You're literally, it's four or five guys living in a van and the most amount of room you'll have from each other is maybe four inches. So it's going to get stinky. Keep for breeze, black ice, whatever. Just do that, it. That, that depends. It depends on the van you buy. Yes. It depends on the amount of clearance you had. For us on our first Canadian tour, there was five seats, five asses. There was no space. So um, moral of the story, uh, don't be like us or prepared to be comfortable with, it, with each other. You yep. will be a pillow. It's true. And then mm. just make sure you have your your necessities to keep you safe. So I would Mm -hmm. say like you always want to have food in the car in case you break down. You always want to have water in the car in case there's any emergency type things. Um, Have a tire iron in there. Don't be an idiot. Make sure someone knows how to change a tire in your group um, or that you have access to call someone that does. Although you should, come on, you should know how to change a tire. If you don't know, just, just learn. Google, YouTube. (laughs) Just learn. Just just do it. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I think, and then just ensure you have enough room for everything. Also, just make sure you have enough room when you choose your vehicle. You want to be able to fit all your gear, your bags, and of course, your merch. Your and merch. Your yes, merch. exactly. Yes. Solid, solid transition. Um, <laughs> so once you kind of have all, all of the, um, you know, overall logistics together, the one thing you need to start thinking of next is is you know once you're at you know once you're at the venue and the play and you play the show what is one of the largest ways you make money when you're on tour besides you know playing a show and that my friends is merchandise so essentially you want to make sure that you have uh you know this amount this the biggest one of the biggest uh sources of revenue on tour you want to make sure you have it organized you have it tallied you have it together and you actually you know have it um we've definitely there's definitely been uh nights for us on tour where admittedly you know um merch has low-key gotten our van to the next venue um and merch sales are really helpful like obviously not only for just you know putting gas in the van which is a bonus but it just makes sure you actually come out of the tour with money in your pocket and you know although some people are like yeah duh of course i mean that's just something you do when you you know at the start uh, you know before you start an album cycle you come out with 
you know, the appropriate amounts of merch and whatnot. But it's definitely something that's worth, you know, really worth thinking about in terms of having the proper amount stocked, making sure you have attractive designs that people will buy. Um, you know, in that case, there's a large overwhelming majority of uh, statistics that show, you know, as cliche as, as it is, you know, black t-shirts sell well. Like, you know, it's just like when you're when you're ordering merch, keep in mind what will sell best. And then, you know, if you want to have that cool little extra thing where you're like, look at this, this is neat. Buy this. Like maybe stock it a bit less and don't put as large of an investment in it. But make sure you put the largest investment in merch into something you know that will sell and something that will make you money. Yes. Um, and basically just being able to diversify what you have. Um, you know, it's better to have two choices than one, because then if someone doesn't like your first choice, they might like your second. So, um, of course, that being said, not everybody has that kind of luxury. So, um, you know, take that as you will. Uh, otherwise, the, the biggest the other biggest thing to keep in mind uh, when you're, you know, peddling merch from show to show, keep inventory. Yes. For the love of God, learn from us. Please keep inventory. It's so important. Um, yeah. You know, these sorts of, you know, keeping inventory is really important in the sense that you know what you have to sell. So if someone says, hey, I really like that shirt, like, do you have it in a small? You can look at your merch and you can be or at your inventory and you can be like, oh, yeah, we have six smalls. Let me grab one for you. Mm -hmm. Instead of you're sitting there being like, you know, they'll walk up and they're like, oh, I love this shirt. Do you have a small? Exactly. Shruggy face. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you, yeah, exactly. Group shruggy face. Sorry, audio people. Yeah, it's okay. We all did um, the shruggy face emoji. God, that's not helpful. Anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> just it's, that just it just lets you know, you know, right away if you don't have something in inventory, you're not keeping people waiting. You're not, you know, you're you're not letting people down and getting their hopes up. Because yeah. in that case, then they, you know, they might be like, oh, sorry, let me look. Then you're spending five minutes digging through your merch box trying to find that not only is it not helpful but it's inefficient yes. you know if you have if you have the very lucky chance of having multiple people in your merch line which is a mwah, glorious feeling you don't want to keep the people behind them waiting because then they might walk away go do something else and be like i'll come back and then they forget and they don't buy anything so like you know as as realistically it being organized and having a consistent inventory of your merchandise it's just important in so many ways. It just, it keeps track of, you know, what people are buying, what's popular, what you may need to restock, et cetera, et cetera. So um, TLDR inventory list is just so key. Yes. And just keeping, keeping your shit together in general, like not even merch, just keeping your shit together in general and just it's having true. your ducks in a row. Yeah. And then I will mm -hmm. also say in terms of the touring, it's great to have the merch, but you also need to let people know you have it. So you need to yes. make sure that you are setting up that merch table as part of your routine for setting up, essentially. You want to make sure mm -hmm. that merch table is set up. Um, a lot of venues will have somewhere where you can set up your merch, but if not, make sure you can find a good table that the venue's cool with and a good spot where people can see it. And please make sure you mention it while you're playing, either before the last song, in a bridge. Make sure Every you song. Every, every yes. song, in, just in like, every song, hey in, in, in every bridge of every song, mention you have merch. Yeah. So um, just make sure that the people know that you have it. And then also another thing to keep in mind is that depending on some, some venues get really busy, uh, have one person go to the merch table to, to be there at the end of the show when you play. So get someone else to pack up for them and get probably the most, you want the most charismatic person or one of the most charismatic people at the merch table to deal with yeah. your customers. Which is be, all of us. Be honest with yourself. If someone is not charismatic, hold them back. They're <laughs> packing like, up. Yeah. They're yeah. packing up. Yeah. yeah. They're packing up everybody's shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, so we, uh, we we kind of touched on it briefly in there about how tight money can be during tour. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and especially that like merch is going to be a lot of the time what fuels your van and your tummies as you as you continue. Uh so with that in mind, where are you going to stay and what are you going to eat while you're on the road? And I feel like this is where you got to bring out those puppy dog eyes. <laughs> especially especially when it turns like when it comes to where you're going to stay, like 
using those connections like we have stayed with everyone from like cousins to like friends of friends of friends to like old business partners to people um, who are in the opening act <laughs> yeah. yeah like mm-hmm. in 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 you know once you've exhausted your network you're like dad do you did you go to college with anyone from Soccer? i don't know <laughs> Selkirk, Manitoba, <laughs> and then when they inevitably say no, you go okay, and then like yeah, we so we've reached out to bands that we've played with. Like, can we crash on your couch? Can we set up a tent in your yard? And that's another way that we've saved money uh, mm-hmm. on tour, especially touring in Canada in summer. Is brought a big tent, and we would just go after the show. We'd like roll up to the campsite at one a.m. and set up a tent and leave the next day. Like it was such a great way it's nice like we, you just kind of like chill after the, granted setting up a tent after you play a show is like not always super in the dark ideal yeah in the if dark you, if you can if you can set up your tent at the campsite before you have to go to the venue do it i mean that's pretty hard depending on where your tent is like, i guess you keep your tent accessible but well that's why but that's why yeah. i say if yeah. it's not always possible but if you can you know trying to find tent poles and you know tall grass at 1 30 in the morning is not not an ideal like what Tuesday night. <laughs> Honestly, it's my ideal Tuesday night. <laughs> I would never do. I, I wouldn't change a thing. Oh. Power so, to you. Yeah, like we we try to avoid staying in hotels as much as possible, as nice as they are. And if you can afford it, on you know, with budget wise on your tour, go for it. But we have relied and gratefully, like we're so thankful to all the people that have put us up over over the years mm-hmm. as we've toured. But like that network that you make is so important. They're like. It's just like the best thing about touring is meeting new people, seeing old friends, and sleeping on their couches. Yep. Mm-hmm. And you can usually, usually, I mean, at least for us, we've been able to stay with the same people multiple times. Yeah. One person, our Sean, we stayed with him three times. I'm, yeah. Every right? time we're every in Calgary. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Sean if you're listening to this. Actually, you know what? If you ever, if you're listening to this podcast and you've ever helped us out with like a place to stay or finding a place today... We're a place to stay. <laughs> shout out! Shout out to you. We, we have a place today. <laughs> Hearts. We yes, appreciate we love you. big time. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. I mean, I think I guess that's about it. With, um, with determining where you want to stay, right? That's yeah. that's about it. Just keep your budget low. If you have friends or family that you can stay with, go to them. Mm-hmm. Um, keep those costs low. I mean, there are going to be times where you might need to duck into a motel or if you just think, you know, that you, you guys just need a nice bed to sleep on. I mean, I don't know. We didn't, we never did that, but it depends. It's all in your preference. It's all in your preference. Um, so that being said, we touched on, so we've gone through venues, we've gone through bands, we've gone through vehicles, we've gone through merch, we've gone through where you're going to stay. One thing that's important is your health. Yeah. And, and what you're going to put in your tummy. Yeah. Uh, like the actual living on the road type thing. Um, but before we go into that, I think we have a lot left. So what do you guys say we make this a two-parter? I love it. You think so? Two-part I, I, I extravaganza. Love, yeah. I just, I, you know what? I love the authority you had of that. Got to do I what just, you got to do. You got You just... You just have that go that go to attitude. I love that. <laughs> it's true. I feel like I'd rather not. I'd rather not mince words. Like we've got, we have so much wisdom to share. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, because uh... our words clearly are so are held in such high regard. So, uh, but no, for, for real, yeah. Like we we don't want to skimp on this section. We really want to be able to like give you guys as much info as we possibly can in the whole thing. And, you know, so you not only can learn from the things that we've found out along the way, but also the mistakes that we've made. So, yeah, I don't think it's really fair to just kind of try and rush through everything else. So, yeah. So yeah. on that mm-hmm. note, I think we'll wrap up this part and we'll start the next part two weeks from now. Uh, we're going to talk about what you're going to eat, all that stuff. Uh, how you're going to survive on the road, what you do in the van uh, when you're driving those eight-hour trips, um, yep. and maybe even our favorite or least favorite tour food. Yeah, we can we can go into that. And mm-hmm. um, 
we're also going to talk about, and I, I think it's good that we're breaking here because we can spend a lot more time on the tech side of things. So I think that'll oh, yeah. be good because in the next episode, we're going to go over what kind of gear you should have, um, what what you can expect from venues. So it's it, it'll be great. So we're going to put a wrap on this part one of how to tour. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us and for listening to this episode seven. And we will continue this conversation, like Brayson said, in two weeks time. So be sure to follow us on socials, follow us on Spotify, give our music a listen if you like what you're here to, or just, just give it a try at least. You might like it, you know? Yeah, <laughs> give it give it a taste. Give it a taste, give it a taste. So that will all be in the show Royal notes. Oak. Sorry. <laughs> a little sip of Royal Oak. <laughs> a little sip, a little sip of Royal Oak. <laughs> so leave links to everything in the show notes. Um, and yeah, so links to everything in the show notes. We're going to wrap this up. Thank you so much for joining us in this part one of How to Tour. And we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody. Chat soon. <laughs> <laughs>